hello everyone so in this particular video we are going to discuss about the rdd rdd is a very much important topic from my interview perspective and also from my spark basic perspective rdd is a basic fundamental data structure of a spark whatever the data frame data set we use right that has been built on top of the rdd only so definitely you should know about the rdd and how actually it works how in the back end all the process happen that definitely you should know so that actually we are going to discuss in this particular video so rdd stand for the resilient distributed data set so let's understand what is distributed means what is data set means what is a resilient means so we know right suppose you have given a large data and that data you have to process so this data is nothing but a, it will represent the data sets so whatever the data we say right that is nothing but a data set for me distributed means so if it is a large data then if you have to process then what actually we will do with the help of the multiple machine multiple worker node we try to process this data in in memory only so data actually we get processed across multiple machine that's why we call it as a distributed so resilient means fault tolerance it handles the failure very efficiently that's why we call it as a resilient also the full form of rdd is a resilient distributed data set data which is across the machine which is getting processed in in memory and which is a resilient also means which is a handling a failure very efficiently that's why we call it as a resilient distributed data sets let's take a example and let's see how in the back end this whole the process works so suppose you have given a file suppose you have a one hdfs file in hdfs location you have given one file suppose you have a 500 mb of the file is available so we know right in hdfs the file generally gets stored into the block so block is nothing but a disk so in disk only the file will get stored in the case of the hdfs so this is also this this also this so this also the disk the here our data is available 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 500 mb of the data is available and here we have ram here we have ram here we have a ram now let's see in rdd how actually we call so first thing will be like if you first you have to read the data which you have to process right so for that what we will do we'll try to write one command rdd1 and we'll try to load a file from a hdfs location so what we'll do we'll create a rdd1 in this rdd1 we'll try to load a file from a hdfs location now after that suppose i have to filter only the even record so what i will do right i will write certain filter condition so with the help of the filter condition i am creating rdd2 and after that i want to see so finally i am calling the action finally i am calling the action so generally in rdd you will see two type of operation one is the transformation and second is the action so this load load file from hdfs location filter these are nothing but a transformation and what is action collect is a action so and we also have a multiple actions all available that also we'll discuss later but as of now you have to understand two type of operation generally you will see in a rdd one is the transformation and action now let's see so whenever rdd1 this is a transformation so whenever you are saying a load file from hdfs in this case do you think like the file will come to the ram and it will try to load the file into the memory no nothing will happen in the case of the transformation nothing will happen unless you will call the action the whole process will not get started so that is how actually it works in the rdd so whenever i am saying load file from hdfs the file the data will be available here only it will not come to the ram whenever i am seeing filter in this case the filter operation will not happen it the data will be available in a disk only whenever i am saying rdd3 dot collect i am calling a action in this case what will happen the data will come to the ram part and here only the process will start and will get the output so how the process will start first it will try to load a file from hdfs it will try to perform a filter operation and uh, finally it will show me the results so that is how actually it will happen so how actually it will know like first we have to load the file then we have to apply a filter and then finally we have to show the result because whenever you write any kind of the transformation it try to create one graph for you whenever you say any whenever you call any transformation in this case execution will not happen but one graph generally got created so this graph will represent like we have to load a file from hdfs and then filter right this is another transformation for that also it will create one graph for you like we have to perform a filter operation and finally you are calling action right in this case what will happen the whole process will start first load will happen then filter will happen and finally we have to show the result so that is how the process actually happens let's understand it better 
सो लेट्स टेक अ एग्जाम्पल सपोज फाइव हंड्रेड एम बी ऑफ द फाइल इज अवेलेबल इन दिस केस इट इज अवेलेबल इन टू अ मल्टीपल ब्लॉक्स वी नो राइट इन एच डी एफ एस लोकेशन द फाइल जनरली गेट स्टोर इन टू द ब्लॉक ओनली बट इन स्पार्क इट ट्राई टू प्रोसेस अ डेटा इन इन मेमोरी सो वाट विल बी द स्टेप फॉर यू टू प्रोसेस इट वाट विल डू फर्स्ट विल ट्राई टू लोड अ फाइल फ्रॉम अ एच डी एफ एस लोकेशन सो वाट आई विल राइट आई विल क्रिएट वन आई विल क्रिएट वन आर डी डी वन आई विल ट्राई टू लोड फ्रॉम अ एच डी एफ एस लोकेशन सो फॉर दैट आई विल क्रिएट एस सी डॉट टेक्स फाइल एंड आई विल पास द लोकेशन इन दिस केस आर डी डी वन विल गेट क्रिएटेड बट दिस इज अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन सो इन दिस केस वाट विल हैपन ओनली वन ग्राफ विल बी क्रिएटेड द डेटा विल नॉट लोड इन टू द मेमोरी दैट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज दिस इज अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन नाउ आफ्टर दैट वी हैव टू सपोज परफॉर्म अ फिल्टर ऑपरेशन सो इन दिस केस वाट विल हैपन बिकॉज दिस ऑल्सो इज अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन दिस केस ऑल्सो फिल्टर ऑपरेशन विल नॉट हैपन इट विल जस्ट क्रिएट अ ग्राफ फॉर यू and finally we have to show the result then we are calling a action so in this case what will happen the whole process will start first it will try to load the file then it will try to filter it and finally it will show me the result means data will come whenever we will call a action it the data will come to the memory and it will start the processing the data one by one with the help of this graph so this graph is representing the dag this will be having all the information like what are the transformation we have to follow one by one so this will represent the all the execution plan for you so whenever you will be having any transformation it will just create a graph for you unless you will call action the process will not start that you have to remember that's how actually it happens in the case of the rdd now how actually it is resilient and how actually it is handling the failure part that we have to understand so suppose you have given you have created a multiple transformation rdd1 then the rdd2 another transformation happening suppose rdd3 another transformation happening rdd rdd4 another transformation is happening and finally you are calling a action rdd5 finally you are calling a action action you are calling when you will call the action the whole process will get started right now in the suppose this rdd2 got failed for any reason rdd2 got failed so how actually it handle the failure so if it is getting failed into the rdd it will take a reference from a parent rdd1 in the so it will be having information rdd1 again it will start the process again it will create rdd2 rdd3 suppose rdd3 got failed so it will take a reference from rdd2 again it will start the process so that's how actually it handle the failure part very efficiently so that's why we call it as a uh, resilient so i hope you got to know like how the process actually happens in the case of the rdd uh, we'll uh, also understand what is a dag in a upcoming lecture but i hope you got the uh, back end idea like how the things happen in the rdd